All right, hey everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey guys, if you are here, I've got a thumbs up already. Good to go. Um, mm -hmm. We're just going to wait a couple seconds just to let some people kind of uh, log in if you're here. Um, if you're not here, that's totally fine. You don't have to be here. Um, you can always, you're, you might be watching this on another date or time. Um, but we have some great things coming up for you guys. Um, we can't wait to talk to Bianca, who is mm -hmm. an amazing baker. Yeah. And if you guys have been stuck at home any length of time, and we're going to try to stay away from the word of what is going on in the world. We're going to kind of just refer to it as the thing that is happening. Because uh, if we say that word, sometimes YouTube likes to uh, demonetize or um, tell you you can't use this video for some reason. So, uh, you know, if we end up using that word, okay. Good but luck. if not, we'll try, we'll try to remember not to use it. Um, so thank you again. If you guys have any questions at any time, and I'll just kind of be talking a little bit um, about what we're doing. And I gotta sit up straight. Ugh, there we go. Uh, so thank you guys so much. So we're going to go and flip over to Bianca in a second here. Let's see if we got her online. Awesome. There Hi, she is. Bianca. Hey, Bianca, how are you? <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Well, thanks so much for uh, thanks so much for your time and stuff like that. So I know um, it's been an interesting time in this world and it gives you more time to kind of create, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so much, yeah. so much free time. More. <laughs> it's, it's funny cause it's, it's kind of like we are like, Hey, yeah, how are you doing? But we've been talking for like the last 10 or 15 minutes before we went live. So, yeah. so we'll just kind of <laughs> catch up with everybody else on what's going on. But we just wanted to talk a little bit to you today just about, um, you know, you're one of our future brides. Yes. And mm -hmm. we've got all these great future brides that we're working with. And your family is amazing. We um, took pictures <laughs> of your sister's wedding. Last and winter. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was uh, amazing. So we wanted to just kind of bring uh, some of our brides online to just kind of chat about um, what their profession is and what they do. And we figured what better way to start this out than <laughs> with you because everybody <laughs> seems to be asking us about the stuff that we're cooking and we're not experts. Um, and we're yeah. like, hey, listen, you're probably way, way more qualified to talk about baking and stuff like I that. Mean, yes. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> hey, you know, this is you could toot your own horn a little bit. You can like yes. give yourself a pat on the shoulder and stuff. So it's all about you. Today. <laughs> okay. Um, so we just wanted to find out a little bit about yourself first of all. So if you um, just want to maybe just tell us a little bit about you and a little bit of your background. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, my background is really varied, but like outside of baking. Um, so yeah, I, I live in Seattle with my fiance. Um, right now I'm actually in Atlanta though, at my mom's house. I wish I had two ovens, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. She's got a nice setup. <laughs> but um, I live in Seattle and we just kind of came here uh, just to, you know, be with family yeah. during the time. But um, in Seattle, I work at as a uh, user experience designer and like design strategist yeah. um, and I've been working at like different startups um, was previously doing like design consulting um, and then before that I um, was mostly working in like editorial doing uh, magazine design and uh, graphic design basically so I switched my career a little bit before yeah. moving to Seattle and went to grad school um, but I'm really big into design and I really like to bring that into my baking too um, but yeah, so that's what I do. Um, I'm 31 years old. I like almost <laughs> cry. I'm like, how old am I? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and yeah, I don't know. What else do you want to know? No, that's cool. That's cool. We just want, you know, we're just trying to, um, you know, get a little feel for you and stuff like that. And, you know, we wanted to chat a little bit about, like, how did we meet too? Because I know we met yeah. a couple times. At Tara's mm -hmm. wedding. But yeah. Did we know you before Tara's wedding or was that the first time we met? I think that was the first time we met. So okay. I remember when Taryn said that she had found this like great photographer. Well, she found you through another connection, I think. Yeah. So Jessica. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. And so she was like, "Oh, I got this great photographer." So we met like, what was that like three years ago, at Taryn's yeah. wedding, yeah, uh, so, doing yeah. photography for that. And I just remembered like really enjoying the process of taking photos for that wedding. And it was, you know, it was nice. We were walking around. We did yeah. lots of really cool shots. Um, and then, you know, when my sister got engaged, I forget how many years ago that was either, but like her wedding was um, last November. Mm -hmm. And so I recommended, I was like, oh, well, like I, I met this photographer before and worked with him and like love the work that you guys do. And she took a look at your portfolio. And I think it was like, 
instant that she was like, okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's just fuck yeah. it. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, so, well, thank yeah, you for so that was really, us. huh? Thank you for referring us to your sister for sure. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, you guys do beautiful work, and um, I think you're really creative, but you're also like so personable, and like you're fun to have there at the wedding, I feel like. so. I try. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bring, bring, bring the party. <laughs> so um, it was fun working with you guys uh, more closely at my sister's wedding, getting to really be part of that whole day of photos, like even starting from the beginning and getting ready. So yeah. I can't wait till it's my turn and hopefully everything will work out yeah. smoothly and it'll yes. be able to happen at the normal time that is planned yeah. currently for, uh, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I knew about your baking first at your sister's wedding, actually, when someone told me that you're the one that baked her wedding cake, which I thought was yeah. really neat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I actually, so not the wedding cake that was at her wedding, um, not the day of the wedding. I did style that cake, so yeah. she okay. ordered a cake from a um, piece of cake, and then I used some florals from the uh, florist to, like, style it and make it look nice um because she wasn't going to have a, a, a cutting cake at the wedding at all um but we did have a party the um the night before it was like a welcome party oh, okay yes. and i uh -huh. made a three-tier cake for that and i think i sent you the, a picture of that one it was um a three-tier cake that i did like some buttercream flowers mm -hmm. and the flavor mm -hmm. was um what i'm calling like my apple pie a la mode cake so it was like a vanilla That's bean nice. cake with apple pie filling and then a Swiss meringue vanilla buttercream. So yeah. I was really fun making that for her and like being able to give that as, the, as a gift. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. That's cool. Was it, did it, ha it had flowers on it you said? It had, yeah, I had, I had painted some buttercream flowers or like sculpted some flowers okay. out of buttercream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show and you then, the, the picture and you tell me if this is the right one. Okay. It's, uh, it is, it's got three tiers. And there's a flower on the top, and then there's two flowers. Wait, on the will bottom. I see it? Oh wait, oh, should I pull up the thing? Yeah, you might not be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's weird because I think my there's a lag on my side. Yeah, there's a little there's a little bit of a delay for everybody. So, um, but it is it's got it's like three tiers, and it's like it's the only picture you sent us of like cakes and stuff like that that it wasn't like it was like probably with someone's cell phone that was taken with. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's it. Oh, perfect. That's the one. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> Sorry, awesome. it took me a, it took a minute to load up, but. That's amazing. Yeah, that was my first time doing three tiers. And I, I've done two tiers before, but really only like as a test. I had never like done multiple tiers and then like delivered it yeah. to someone. So we had to, you know, situate it in the back of the car and like make sure it was all. Yeah. You know, it was like pretty solid because it had been like in the refrigerator overnight and had lots of dowels and different yeah. things in it. But yeah, oh, cool. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. After your sister's wedding, I went on Instagram and then I um, saw your um, account and all the beautiful stuff that you've done on there. And I was like, wow, I had no idea you're a professional baker like that. That's so amazing. And then, well, I, uh huh. No, I was just like, I'm not. I guess I can't say the word professional because I didn't like go to school for it. Yeah, but exactly. I am a, well, you know, he didn't uh, go to school for am, photography. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I feel this like, is true. I feel like you well, just it's not have, my main source you have the artsy fartsy inside of you, you know, and so like it just needs to come out. So it's got to come out one way or the other. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I put so, lots of stuff on Instagram. And, so tell us um, about the Great American Baking Show that you were part of. Like, how did you even hear, hear about it and decide to apply for that? What was that experience like? Man, actually, um, what's funny is that it, that was the third time I applied, actually. So oh, wow. third time's a charm. Yeah, yeah. I really went through, <laughs> went through the process multiple times. But mm -hmm. so I guess it all started when I was living in New York. This was like... I don't know, like eight years ago or something. And one of my good friends saw that a show was um, like casting. She was in the like Broadway scene and she yeah. saw something being casting, um, casted, sorry, a open casting for a baking show. It wasn't, it wasn't the great American baking show, but it was like the version of it that they did before it was on ABC. Yeah. And uh, I like last minute decided to apply for that. And then ever since then I had kind of like been just like keeping my eye out for different, um, 
baking shows. Yeah. And the first year that I found out about the Great American Baking Show, I was actually in um, grad school when I wanted to apply. And yeah. so, you know, I had like some free time, but I, I really hadn't done a ton of baking outside of like cakes and cookies. Like that's mm -hmm. how I started with, with cookies. And I got into like cakes and then cake decorating. And so I was really focused in that area. So I had to like force myself to try different stuff, <laughs> yeah. um, like make bread and like, let me try pastries. Cause I just, I never like at the time I never really like ever craved that stuff. And so I never made it. Um, yeah. but that first year I applied and I did get like through the first phase, but not the second phase. Then the second time I applied, which was when I was living in Chicago, I made it through the first two phases. <laughs> and then the last time I finally made it through all of it. So, um, wow. yeah, I, I kind of just knew about the show because I had <laughs> been trying to get on it for such a long time. Yeah. Um, and then it finally, finally happened for me, which is kind of crazy. It was really crazy when I found out. Yeah, that's awesome that you're persistent like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people it's will just kind of give up the first time. They'll be like, oh, they don't want me and then stuff like that. But you're like, no, no. You again. want me. I want to do this, you know? You did not yeah, give yeah. up. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's so cool. There were quite a few other people, too, who had applied for a few times before yeah. getting on it. So it's not an uncommon thing. Really? Yeah. Wow. I want to do Survivor really, really bad. And I don't know, like, I know that Unjung, <laughs> I got the green light for her to let me go and do Survivor a long time ago, but now that we shoot weddings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's, like, impossible to, you know, kind of uh, leave, because like, I don't know when you're going to be gone, and you have to be gone for a certain amount of time and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So. Oh, my gosh. I feel like that'd be a really intense show to be on. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I'd get I feel like I already, right I, that was the most intensity I could probably handle. <laughs> How long were you there? We watched the show yesterday, by the way. Binge watched it. We we're going to watch the finale tonight um, with our kids. And that was so inspiring for our kids, too. So oh, I know it was in England. I love so how long were you there? Yeah, so they um, they flew us out. Let me get my picture. We were there for a month, so about four weeks. And the intention is that everyone who flies out there does stay for the whole time, even yeah. if you're like, I mean, you can go home, but, um, you know, they want people to be able to be there for the whole thing because we all show back up for the finale. So yeah. you'll see me later in the finale. Oh, I mean, okay. just like briefly. But oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we were there for a while. And I mean, what's nice about it, well, what was, what was, what's very different from the British show. So this, the Great American Baking Show is, is really a direct um, translation from the Great British Baking Show, but oh. to um, an American audience. Okay. And so, like, Paul Holly was still one of the judges, but then the other judge is an American pastry chef, Sherry Yard. Um, but the format is still completely the same. Yeah. However, when it's filmed in, um, when it's the Great British one and all of the people live in the UK, they actually film it over the weekends and then they go home during the week. Oh, So man. what was different? <laughs> yeah. So they have, like, a little, bit, a little bit of downtime, like a little bit of time to like retest the recipe in between um, episodes. But yeah. for us, it was like back to back to back. So for one one episode took two days to film, and we did two episodes per week. Wow. So it wow. was like really, really busy and really fast paced. And we did some preparation before flying out to the yeah. UK. But then once you were in it, like you really only had like maybe one or two free days to like practice something or, or play around with yeah. one of your recipes. Oh my gosh. Cause I was always wondering like, how do you, like, do you know ahead of time, like kind of what things you're gonna, cause here's what, here's what I saw. I saw one of the guys, I think his name was Alex mm -hmm. and he always mm -hmm. had an earring that matched like what you guys were doing. And I was like, how does he know <laughs> what they're going to be baking? He's got a cookie <laughs> earring on and now they're doing cookies. How does he know they're, they're yeah. cookies that day? So, you know, I guess you know a little yeah, bit they, about, Go ahead. Yeah, they give us, um, so when we were, I mean, it was a very whirlwind process. So yeah. once we, when we got the announcement that we were going to be, that we were on, cast for the show, we had like a month before we were going to be flying out. Okay. So during that month, we were given the, um, the like topic or the theme for each week. Yeah. And then you know how 
on the show for the um, tech, uh, sorry, the signature challenge, they say that the bakers had a chance to practice this at home. Yeah, well, we did actually get a, get to practice that, so oh, we knew okay. what the signature challenge was going to be and the showstopper, so that we had time to practice it, and then we knew what the theme of the week. So for like. Um, for cake week, for example, like I knew that I needed to create an olive oil cake and I knew that I needed mm-hmm. to create a chocolate gateau yeah. and mine was just disastrous <laughs> like on the show. <laughs> uh, but so, like I had practiced that stuff beforehand yeah. and then, but the technical really is a complete surprise and oh. it's like, I, I would say that that's the part of the show that I think most people don't believe that it's actually a surprise, yeah. like most viewers. But mm-hmm. truly, like we found out, like okay, you're gonna make angel food cake for the technical, and then we had a little meeting with like the legal person, and then we literally started baking. Like that, it was just that quick. So it oh, definitely wow. was a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> for those that's ones. cool. Because reactions did, were real. Yeah, because I don't want to like ruin it for anybody who hasn't watched it because we watched it on Hulu. Yeah. And so I was like, oh sweet, it's on, it's on Hulu. Hulu. We can watch it because we don't have cable. So we're like, how can we? How can we watch this thing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's on it's on ABC too on ABC's website. Oh, sweet! Oh, oh we could have gone. Okay. I did go it's on the ABC's website and I saw clips, but then when I searched it on my Roku by just saying the name of the show, it said, "Hey, it's on Hulu." And I was like, "Wait, yeah, I have Hulu." So, because <laughs> uh, it's like it comes with Disney Plus, so I'm like, "Okay." Um, oh, perfect. So I so I think go ahead, baby, if you wanted to ask yeah. something. So, but, what are some other experiences on the show that the viewers get? don't get to see. I know there's something that you told Craig yesterday and I thought that was so interesting. Like um, some yeah, of the um, things that you get to do. Thing. Yeah, sure. So there's there are lots of like fun things that I can share. So, um, well, you we are actually in a tent. Um, I remember my mom asking me like, are you really in a tent or are you like <laughs> That's what I thought too. Set? I was like, maybe I'm they're like, on set. <laughs> We're on a set, but the set is inside a tent, and yeah. it's literally, like, the way it looks is literally the way it is. Like, we're we walking to the front of the tent. We are walking down this, like, grassy pathway, and then we walk yeah. into the tent. That's cool. Granted, we do that, like, multiple times. There's, yeah. like, multiple takes of everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, you are in the tent. The weather, you can feel. So, like, on days when it was really hot, like, yeah. I mean, it was just really hot, and it's so you had to try yeah. to, like, adjust in the moment for what the weather was going to be that day or if it was humid that you had to take that into account when you were making your bread. Yeah. Um, what you can't see is that like at any given point there are like tons of other people on the floor. So yeah. I don't know how they like the magic of um, video editing where you really don't see people's shadows like in yeah. the magic of like the camera light and stuff because at any given point there's like multiple producers around there's culinary producers there's different people helping to make the production come to life yeah. um, okay. and that makes it, it it feels very different than what you might than what it like looks like I think it looks yeah. like you're just really in your own little zone but no there's like people around <laughs> and everywhere um, That's cool. so that was uh, definitely something to adjust to and uh, after every challenge um, especially like the signatures and the showstoppers we we did get to like taste each other's bakes and so um in the group of bakers on my season I, we're all really close still so we yeah. have like a group chat and we we talk and we share recipes and so like soon after the show had aired um actually soon after we had left there were certain recipes where i was like oh i remember tasting this person's like cinnamon roll or something and like yeah. i really want to make that or try that recipe like on my own and so we we've shared recipes with each other um we can't like we can't share all of our full recipes from the show like out broadly to yeah. the world, but um, oh. like variations of, or things that we're inspired by or things yeah. that we learned from the judges, um, you definitely can can share. So, yeah, we we've got a little baking community going on, which is really cool because yeah. that's not something I have before going on the show. So right, that's really yeah. really neat. It's like going to a conference and meeting a bunch of people, and then yeah. you like become best friends. You and you're become like, a community. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Now we can all we just geek out about over <laughs> baking stuff and you know literally just talk about baking and other things too. But like yeah. mostly baking. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was watching the when I was watching the show, I kept seeing like uh, bees flying around because I know it's outside. <laughs> so I kept I kept seeing bees in the shot, and I'm going, "Baby, do you see that bee again? There's another bee." I'm like, "How are people not freaking out?" Oh my about god, bees? no one was reacting to it. <laughs> 
I mean, no, we did. They just didn't catch the. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Just, they just edited that part out. Yeah. Um, it's good thing that nobody. I mean, I think I do remember them asking and making sure nobody was had allergies. Yeah. I can't remember if they were bees or wasps. Oh. I want to say they were bees because I think if they were wasps, I would have been more scared. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I think that like there was a nest somewhere in the tent, and I think this has happened every year that they've done it. So they were all like very used to the fact that there's like bees flying around, but wow. you know how in the set you can see that there's like decorations in the background and there's yeah. some like decorated cakes and stuff. Yeah. Those are real. And so they have like sugar on them. Oh, and so wow. there was like a certain part of the set where it was like, well, if you have to use the microwave, like go to the microwave on the right hand side. Cause the microwave on the left hand side is next to the, the, yeah. the set cake. And then yeah. there's bees like, <laughs> like burrowed into the cake. Oh, so there wow. were certain parts um, when we were filming because everything, when you're watching it, it moves very quickly, yeah. right? But the judging actually yeah. takes much longer than that. And so we're sitting there at our benches, like waiting for each other to get judged, and bees just come in. Bees trying to like burrow into my bread sculpture. They're trying to like get into the cake. I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, yeah, there were some some brutal <laughs> things That's that happened, so cool. but I only. Someone only got stung once, and it wasn't. It, it was okay. Like that, yeah. she was okay. But yeah. it was a lot of swatting and like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. So, just, um, yeah. wh what was your life like um, outside of filming? Like, you know, at the end of the day, did, where did you guys um, stay? Did you guys stay together? Tell us a little bit about that. Or what you can tell us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you're allowed to tell us. I think. Stuff. It wasn't like it's not like real world style where you're all staying in one house. Mm -hmm. Though I think that would be or like Top Chef. Like I think that'd be really interesting, yeah, but yeah. maybe not very effective because part of the part of what they want you to be able to do is like take feedback that you get per episode yeah. and really start to use it as you move forward. Um, I mean, it's not something that they necessarily talk about, but it's a good thing to show yeah. if you're like learning something and improving while you're on the show. Um, so we did stay in like an apartment hotel kind of thing, kind of like a residence inn, but much nicer, I would say. Um, yeah. We had like little like one bedroom apartments with kitchens. I mean, the kitchens were tiny, but we mm. were able to like practice, um, practice baking some of our recipes oh. there. So mm. yeah, and so where we stayed was like 30 minutes away from set, um, but kind of in the middle of nowhere. So mm. there wasn't like, a ton of stuff to do. So yeah. really, um, I mean, our set time, our call time was like 6 a.m. Wow. most days. And then we ended at like 8 or 9. So we would go back and sometimes we would have dinner together. Um, and then we would all just like go to our rooms and sleep and then get up the next day if we had a second day of filming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if we had a break, if we had like a one or two day break in between, sometimes we would like take the train somewhere, like go into the, um, go into London and oh, hang out cool. like in Piccadilly or, um, go to like Windsor castle. Like we did do some like activities like yeah. that just to help us, you know, like stay sane kind of yeah. because yeah. we could, it's very easy to get like so focused and that's, it's important to be focused, but it's also important to like give yourself a break yeah. and like go have some tea. <laughs> So we did, we did hang out together, which is, I think how, you know, how we yeah. all became really good friends is that it wasn't just like, you know, it's not like this like cutthroat scenario. Like we're helping yeah. each other. Like one of my, um, one of the bakers, Marissa, I guess I, I won't give it away like for, for how long she was there, but mm -hmm. she was like right down the hall from me. And so we would often like run over to each other's apartments, be like, Oh, can you taste this? Can you taste that? Oh, that's cool. And just like give each other feedback. So it was, yeah. I mean, we have a community of we're all trying to help each other become better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, it was fun. Yeah. So when yeah. we were watching the show, I was like, oh, because um, we were actually supposed to be in London yesterday. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Because, you uh, know, the, our trip, our Paris and London trip got canceled because of everything that's going on right yeah. now. And so when we saw you in England, we were like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but that's oh. cool that they had it there. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It was nice. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to show a couple pictures. So everybody who's watching live right now, we're just going to show a couple pictures of the things that um, she's baked before and then a couple of pictures from um, when she was on the show. Uh, and then we just wanted to ask you a couple of quarantine kind of basics because everybody's kind of quarantined right now. We're on our kind of social distancing 
in the house. And so we're all kind of baking some things. And so I know we talked to you about maybe some baking tips and stuff like that. So let me just show everybody. Um, and if you're watching at home too, Bianca, if you, um, it's a bit of a delay. So I'll kind of explain what's going, what's on the screen instead. And then you can just kind okay. of probably <laughs> say something of what it is. So um, let's see, we'll go over here. We'll go to this. All right, so first thing we have is we have some, it looks like some bread that, that's like twisted. And it looks so good that I just want to eat the screen. Ah, yes. <laughs> so. Looks like there's some raisins and nuts in it. Here, wait, let me actually pull up the folder that I sent you and yeah, I can no see. Problem. Oh, my babka. Yes, the babka. Yeah. <laughs> That's ah, the babka. chocolate babka. So this chocolate babka is, I made it the first time I applied for the show. Yeah. This was my first foray into doing a bread that wasn't like just a roll. Like I would make bread at home, but it would be like just rolls for yeah. like holiday dinner and stuff. Yeah. Um, so this is my first time making a yeasted bread that had a little bit more like technique involved. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a chocolate babka. Yeah. Okay, cool. I the think it has one, nuts in it. The next cool. one I'm going to show is uh, a cake and it's got some awesome gold all over it. Wow. How did you do oh, that? Oh yeah. It's my favorite. Is this is one of my edible? favorites. So I, yeah, it's all edible. Wow. Yeah. I, when I, when I bake and do cake decorating, like I only like to use edible things. So I actually, I mean, fondant is edible, but I don't really like the taste of it. Yeah. So this cake actually is covered in white chocolate ganache, and wow. it like white chocolate, white chocolate ganache specifically, like well, cho regular chocolate too, but it like hardens in a way that you can still you can like paint on it. Oh, cool. So the green that you're seeing there is like edible, um, edible art paint, and wow. then the gold is like the like edible fabric. <laughs> yeah, I kind of went to town. This was um, this was a cake for my one of my best friend's baby's first birthday, and the theme of her birthday was Black Panther. Yeah. And so I oh, designed cool. the cake um, off of like one of the dresses that um, Lupita was wearing in the movie. Oh, that's cool. Wow. All right. So next one is, and I'll go through them quickly so we can get to the baking tips because I know people are like wanting to see the baking tips, but I want to see this food too. So <laughs> uh, the black cake with the, um, the white. orbs on the top. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This was, I think I did this around Halloween. And I was like, this is going to be my like spooky cake, but it doesn't yeah. look spooky at all. <laughs> it looks great though. But this yeah. was like me trying my hand at like black frosting, um, which uh, well, here's a tip if you just have, I mean, I don't know that anyone will be making black frosting during this time, but yeah. <laughs> if you're ever trying to make really dark colored frosting, mm -hmm. it would be ideal if the frosting is going to be chocolate, then you can use black cocoa. Yeah. And the, so you, you don't have to use as much like food coloring to get okay. it to the darkness that you want because it's already so rich. Like the black cocoa is the kind that they use for Oreos. Yeah. Um, okay. so that's what I had used here. And then these like chocolate orbs. I just have like these like um, silicone molds at home, and I yeah. I just pour um, tempered chocolate in there, and then yeah. just kind of like made them to stick together. Okay, that's um, like a chocolate, cool. I think. So one time I so whenever I go to a wedding, I am always leery about black cakes or dark colored like fondant and stuff like that because <laughs> as soon as someone takes a bite into it, their mouth turns black yeah. <laughs> and it looks like like squidding just squid and so i remember going to a wedding the bride and groom cut the cake and then there was black icing all over there smiling and laughing after they just squished cake in their face and then they looked like a pen exploded in their mouth it was so funny and so everybody's like don't eat the cake stay away from the cake just take the icing off eat the inside because um i got all of us we're all me and the groom were in the um the bathroom like trying to get it off of our mouths i love cake so much oh, there he is so, uh, oh my gosh, I, yeah. Uh, the next thing is, uh, I think the cake you did for your sister, and then next yeah. one is Ooh. the the one you did. Oh, that was really nice. Oh, on I love the orange that. background with the pink, the pink and white. Oh cake. yeah. I can't oh. remember what kind of cake this was, but yeah. this is what I would say is like, I guess one of the main things in my cake decorating that I really like to do yeah. is like textured buttercream yeah so this is all buttercream and i just kind of um i used to do pot well i i still do but i not as often do pottery yeah and when i was doing pottery classes i discovered how the pottery tools like basically 
when you're scraping pieces off of like clay, it feels like you're also, it's the same feeling as like scraping off cold buttercream. Oh, cool. So I bought a new set of tools and I used those like sculpting tools with my cakes. And so I did yeah. that with this one and kind of like, like created that texture there. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. Um, the next one is like oh. some insides of the cake, which look uh, amazing, amazing to eat. So. Four layers. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have yeah, some, looks I like, like some cookies. Are those peanut butter? Yeah, another butters. Oh man, homemade those are homemade nutter, nutter butters. butters. All right, yes, so you're totally sending us the recipe for that one because yes. our kids love nutter butters. <laughs> yeah, I can send you the recipe for that. I actually, mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't remember. I, I have to double check and figure out where I, where I got the recipe. Yeah. But it was a recipe from somebody else that I played around with. So I'll share that with you for sure. Thanks. And then we have some. They have blueberries on them. Wow. And they look like a cream puff of yes, some kind. Yes, Oh my gosh, yummy. Um, and then now we're, in, now we're in pictures of you. This is where you're doing your sculpt, the bread sculpture for the um, the show. Oh, yeah. The show. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I watched that. I watched that episode. I, all the episodes, I'm like, oh, I've never been so invested in a TV show in my life, <laughs> <laughs> knowing somebody on it. Um, and then the next one is them judging your. You're bringing up your bread sculpture to be judged, and he's giving you that stare mm -hmm. that he gives. Yeah. Is. In yeah. intense. Very He's got really piercing. Just yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Stare <Stared> um, <laughs> <laughs> The next thing is, I think you're making, you're cutting uh, a chocolate cake of some kind or something like that. On the oh, show? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the first, ep the first uh, episode. Okay. And then let's see what we got next. We got you. Putting looks like icing, icing, on a icing cake. something. I think that's. Uh, is that cheesecake? Yes, cheesecake. cheesecake. Yeah. And yes. then the last one is the group picture of everybody that was on the show with you guys. So um, my kids scream every time you come on the screen and every yeah. time Alex comes on the screen. My, <laughs> my son goes, he goes, he goes, oh, he's so funny. <laughs> like, so, yeah, it's uh, it's a. Yeah, oh, it's our funny. girls scroll, scroll through your entire Instagram feed yesterday. The entire oh thing. We're like, okay, guys, we have to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, I love yeah. that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to get now into just a couple of mm -hmm. quarantine tips. baking tips and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, we're going to let you kind of, I'll, if we have some yeah. questions, we'll ask. But I know you probably have some. Anjung might have something as well. Um, but go ahead and just tell me, like, maybe a couple basic tips basic that we tips. all should know. Yeah, while like baking have a fire home. extinguisher yeah. by, your, <laughs> by your oven at all times. We have that. <laughs> so. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I guess it really depends on what you're making. Um, but I guess I'll start with what I've seen people making the most, which yeah. is bread. Yeah. Um, the survival And thing. I don't know if that's because, yeah, I guess it's because like it's such a staple item that like grocery stores all ran out of, but then they still had the bread flour. Yeah. So I guess people just decided like to make bread on their own, but it's just funny because I walked into the store and I'm like, why is everybody all of a sudden like wanting to make bread? This is funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I will say... Well, the first tip I wrote down, which was just a nod to something on the show, which is to not forget the yeast. Yeah. If you're making yeah. yeast bread. Just <laughs> 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 to make sure you have the yeast. <sighs> yeah. Um, and but but not every bread like involves yeast. So I think if you are like first getting into baking, there are like some really easy bread recipes that really don't require that much technique to be able to do, which are like um, really like basic enriched breads or like different types of rolls. My personal favorite place to go for like bread recipes is King Arthur, King Arthur Flowers um, okay. website. They have a ton of really good recipes and anything that's like highly rated, like really, as long as you follow the directions and like really make sure you've got the right ingredients, um, it'll, it'll work out. I guess one thing that I'll give as a tip is to make sure you're looking at the recipe and seeing if it's calling for instant yeast or active yeast okay. because okay. they they're different just by nature of like the instant yeast is, is like smaller granules and it's activated without like you can, what am I trying to say? You don't have to put it in any like warm water to yeah. like activate it. You can use it immediately like in the, like with okay. the dry ingredients with your bread, you just like add in the milk or whatever you're adding and then mix it up. With active yeast, you have to like activate it. You have to like bring it to life. Okay. And that's, that's what with proofing like is, right? Is their, that what, um, that's like hmm? when, you, when they say proof your yeast, is that what you mean by, is that the same as activating it? 
Um, uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Okay. I actually I never hear people saying to. I don't hear that as much, but I guess some people do say yeah. that to proof the I yeast. All to the, like, like the recipes yeah. I see say proof your yeast. I'm like googling what does proof my yeast mean. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah. I need to let it sit there. For a while. It. Yeah. Oh. It's like, I guess like proofing the yeast is like preparing it to be like like starting the fermentation yeah. process. So you know you like you have a little bowl of warm water or milk or whatever it is that you're needing to use and you just sprinkle the active yeast on top and then after like five or ten minutes it should be like visibly foamy yeah and that's how you know that it's like activated and it's ready to be used okay um one of my friends recently asked me because i think this might be the case too where she had some yeast but it was old mm -hmm. now i'm not like an expert on bread and i don't know for certain that like how old your yeast can be and it still like works but Adding a little bit of sugar to the water when you're proofing it yeah. mm -hmm. does help because it can feed on that sugar. So if it's like a little bit old, that might help it like come back to life. You know, proof <laughs> okay. like it's easier. Yeah. Um, oh. So that's a tip for bread. I um, oh well, here's another good tip, and this is actually from the baking show that I I learned prior to being on the show, but from Paul Hollywood, which is depending on what kind of bread you're making, if it's like a um, if it's a savory bread. Instead of putting flour on your board when you're kneading it out, mm -hmm. you can put like a little bit of olive oil or like maybe like vegetable oil or any kind of like oil. You can put that on your board instead. And so it, it does the same thing with like helping the bread not stick to the board or to your hands, but yeah. it doesn't add any extra flour into it. Oh. So then you oh, don't okay. miss the ratios at all. Yeah. And it just adds like some like moisture, but not mm -hmm. um, dryness. And so that's a really helpful tip for like, if you're making like French bread or like just some kind of like basic uh, loaf, that's like one really good tip. You can yeah. also use the um, mixer. I really like using my hands to knead bread cause it's like, it's therapeutic. Um, <laughs> and there's lots of videos out there on like kneading techniques, but basically it, you're, you're rolling the bread like, um, I don't know, like imagine if you were like a kid playing with your Play-Doh, it's yeah. like you're like rolling it and then holding it and then rolling it again. And it's just like this like, you know, this fluid movement, um, which <laughs> depending on what you're making, some yeah. things require like you know, 10 minutes of kneading and so you can really get into a groove. Yeah. Um, let's see, let's see. For enriched breads, so that's a bread that has like eggs in it or butter. Um, Make sure to like give those really enough time to proof. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really learned on the show, because really I, I really am not like a master bread baker. I yeah. make like like lots of quick breads, like zucchini, banana, and I make like soft like rolls, like milk bread and stuff like that. But I really don't do a lot of like like these like rustic sourdough loaves and things. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I learned from Paul on my bread sculpture was that depending on the level of like um, butter or eggs that you have in the recipe and if you've like added other things into it like nuts or dried fruit you just like really need to give it time to proof um, yeah. because it, it's heavier yeah and so it takes some time for it to like really rise um, oh, and if you okay. just like a higher level of butter and stuff like you really need to like give it give it a good need yeah and then really let like rest. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right, it makes sense because it would be heavy inside, yeah. and then yeah. okay, I get because I'm about to try to do like a raisin bread, something like yeah. that. Because I want to start adding stuff in. Because the more I watched that episode where you guys were doing like breads and stuff, I was like, wait a second, I can just throw stuff in. It looks like and it's <laughs> yeah. still gonna taste awesome. So let me buy some fruit and start yeah. throwing it inside the bread. Yeah. If we can well, a good fruit. tip with that is to add the. So depending on the kind of bread it is, if it's enriched and you're adding something in, it can mm -hmm. it can go through two proofs. So I typically would recommend to let the first proof be without the add-ins, depending on what they are. If it's yeah. like just like cheese, maybe it's okay, or just like herbs and spices, that's fine. But if you're wanting to add like nuts and fruit or like olives, it's best to add those after the first proof. Yeah. Aww. So when you're re-kneading it to shape it, to add those ingredients yeah. in then so that they don't like weigh down the dough too much. Uh, but yeah, okay. That's I cool. get crazy with just like trying to add different things in, especially if you have like 
I don't know, like leftover ham or yeah. like some bacon, onions. Like you can put lots of stuff in oh, there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's Emma said she wanted to make one with bacon and cheese in it. And I was like, sweetie, let's do it. Because yeah. that would be, because when you guys did the breadsticks, I was like, oh my gosh, I should do like bacon and cheese in a breadstick. Because mm -hmm. the kids made like a breadstick, yeah. but it was like, they didn't put they didn't put a lot in it like yeah, the recipe they didn't, they didn't know how much to put in it mm -hmm. and it was like this um yeah. disney cinderella recipe book so it's not exactly the most uh -huh. specific thing in the world so <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back in and modify that thing a little bit and do like a yeah. soft breadstick because i don't like the crispy breaking your teeth breadsticks yeah yeah <laughs> i thought i didn't either but um one of the bakers made these uh um, cacho y pepe breadsticks, yeah. and those were really good. Where oh no, that? sorry, they were carbonara breadsticks. Mm -hmm. Carbonara. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had they had taken them. They were good. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I was gonna say I um, but also like outside of bread, you could do things like biscuits too. So I make a lot of I love biscuits. Um, I actually have a biscuit recipe on my blog, um, that I've made with bacon and Gruyere and black pepper before. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty good. So it was like this a more savory breakfast biscuit. Yeah. Well, we could do what we'll do is we'll put the link to your blog in mm -hmm. the comments section below so that people can, you know, like go to it and find all this stuff too. Because I'm sure they want to yeah. make it just as yeah. much as I'm going to probably go and bake something mm -hmm. after, after we're done here. Because I'm like, <laughs> my stomach is turning. I know you showed me cookies earlier that you had in front of you too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want some cookies. Yeah. And we know oh, yeah. that on your Instagram too, you have um, some recipes um, right there on your feed. <laughs> so for all the viewers out there, she just mentioned um, um, her blog, but there's also um, her Instagram that you can go to and their recipes on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. No, yeah, well, I, um, these, cookies, these cookies actually don't have any eggs in them. Uh -huh. um, so that was something I was testing and I'm going to post like today, I think. Or okay. tomorrow after I test them one more time, but they're actually like really chewy, like yeah. almost more like better to me. My mom was like, "I like these better than your other cookies." <laughs> I'm like, okay, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, there's. I mean, especially when we're in this time where like we're really trying to not go to the grocery store a yeah. lot. If you feel like, oh, I don't have eggs, so I can't like make something, but you you can. You can use. There are lots of recipes that don't have any eggs in them. Honestly, a lot of times I just Google certain things and I'm like cake without eggs or something yeah. if I don't already know and, yeah. and mm -hmm. I mean Google has lots of answers but granted like baking is difficult and like it's not well it's not super difficult but it's technical yeah, yeah. And so sometimes the lack of something will definitely change a recipe um, mm -hmm. so try to like go for a source that you think is credible or at least has like a lot of reviews because yeah. um, mm -hmm. in my early days of like trying new recipes I can't tell you how many times I made, made stuff that I just like randomly found and <laughs> didn't work out at all. Yeah. <laughs> I had to like yeah. totally toss a bunch of ingredients. So um, yeah, there are certain people though that I think have great recipes like um, King Arthur, Anna Garten. Um, I have like a few recipes on my site, but really not that many. Um, but the ones I have, I have tested a lot. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Do do do. Oh, some other tips that I wrote down for mm -hmm. generally anything that's like a cake or cookie kind of thing. Yeah. It's best to try to have your butter like at room temperature okay um so that it suffices really well and it's like a hard thing sometimes because you just want to bake and you forgot that the butter was still right. in the fridge yeah. <laughs> if that happens, you take the stick and like cut it up into small cubes and if you if you put that like on a plate and leave it out for about 30 minutes it'll have softened up enough to use it by then okay sometimes i get like oh. really impatient and i do pop it in the microwave but like like for like five seconds spurts. Mm -hmm. If it starts melting, then it's like not really gonna work out. But um, right. you can like, you know, there's different things you can do to get it to be ready to, yeah. um, or you can grate it. If it's like oh. really hard, you can grate it. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Then it'll like really soften up. Because the kids were just More baking easy. something today and they, um, they were like, Daddy, it's coming out of the fridge and they needed soft butter. I was like, well, I'll just kind of put it in the microwave for a couple seconds <laughs> Like 10 seconds yeah. and then bring it out. And then they kept doing it. And then I was like, never now mind, guys. Melting. Let's do something else. <laughs> so that's a good tip. I like that tip. Okay. Yeah. That works out. Um, 
And then like a lot of recipes, and I think this is just a, a tip that really does make a difference with cakes and cookies and stuff is mm -hmm. when the recipe says to cream the butter and sugar, Yeah. just to like really make sure that you mix it ideally with like a hand mixer or a um, sand mixer or something until it's like lighter in color. Mm -hmm. um, because it'll like lighten up and it'll become more pale. And what that really means is that like each little sugar crystal has really been like um, enveloped, I guess, by okay. the butter. And it's like you've added more volume already to the recipe that you're making. So it's it just helps to make sure that um, mm -hmm. everything's really emulsified, but it also helps to like lift, help lift the batter a little oh, okay. bit um, in oh. addition to the leavening stuff that you'll add later. Oh, cool. Wow, I am yeah. learning so much. <laughs> Well, that's really, really cool. There's lots of things. Like, people are, like, baking can be, I guess, intimidating, or it just, like, it's, it can be time-consuming. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely true. But, like, by, like, doing, like, really reading recipes beforehand, like, really, like, yes. it's annoying sometimes to prep out all of your ingredients, but it truly makes the process of actually making the thing, yeah. like, more, like, calming because you're not, like, scrambling around the kitchen trying to find, like, yeah. Well, the baking powder, and I mean, I've I've made lots of things before where I've been making it, and then halfway through, I realize that I'm missing something, <laughs> and I have to like run to the store or, or something like yeah. that. But so I try to always like measure everything out, um, and then it makes the actual like mixing process a lot faster. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, that's really really cool. Thank you for those yeah. tips. I really really appreciate yeah. it. Now yeah. I'm gonna make sure I because I when I know that it's butter and sugar, I usually just kind of go. That yeah, looks good enough. And then I'm like, well, maybe I should have done, yeah. it, done it more. <laughs> Especially going with my, you know, going with my recipe. I, I'm the number one person to mess up a recipe because I ran out of something. So I'm like, okay, instead of baking powder, let me try the baking soda. What's the, <laughs> what's the ratio? I ran out of butter. Well, I have like, um, what's that? It's like lard, but it's not lard. What is it? Shortening. Mm -hmm. I'll have like some short shortening yeah. as like a backup in the cupboard. Yeah. I've tried that before. So, because Unjung's allergic to yeah, I mean, dairy. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so can, you, can you eat butter and bake good or no? Yes. Thank God I can have butter, but I just can't have straight up milk. Okay. Yeah, milk or chocolate chips, she okay. can do that. Yeah. So, um, and we don't want her to okay. die. So, the kids, every time the kids are <laughs> baking something, like, Mom, we want to bake this, but, you know, we can't give it to you because it's got milk. milk. In it. And we're like, oh, no, just use almond milk as yeah. best you can. And <laughs> it usually turns yeah. out pretty good, so... Yeah, I've been playing around with, um, because I, like, since the show, I mean, I've just baking, been baking a lot more than I typically was before the yeah. show, um, so I had to, like, tamper down the amount of things that I ate on a daily basis, so I started trying to, like, be kind of, like, paleo or use, like, more natural sweeteners and yeah. things, so um, I have used, like, oat milk and almond milk and coconut milk, I have found oh, cool. do wow. work pretty well, like, in recipes, coconut obviously has a little bit of like coconut flavor, but yes. it, if what you're making like might taste good with coconut, coconut it could milk. be a cool right. thing. <laughs> you don't like coconut? <laughs> I, I mean, I honestly, I don't mind it too much, especially when I know it's got to have coconut in it. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm yeah. she does not like coconut. Yeah, the flavor. The flavor. Yeah. So I'll do. We do yeah. almond milk with her, but I love like if I know it's coconut, like an almond joy. I like an almond joy because I know there's coconut in it. But when I yeah. When I'm eating something, I'm like, why is there this coconut flavor? <laughs> Never um, mind. So, yeah. That's but funny. we just want yeah, to say. Oat milk is good to get that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just want to say thank you yeah. again so much for your time and stuff like that. I know, judging by the kitchen behind you, you want to get baking again. <laughs> and I watching the show made me want to get a KitchenAid mixer now because. Um, I have this old beat up mixer that my mother in law had, and it works great for like thirty years. <laughs> but it doesn't hold down really, really well. I know sometimes you still have to like I watch the people ah. on the show going, "Okay, I have to hold the mixer down. It's okay to hold the mixer down because it's like hopping everywhere when I'm yeah. trying to need something." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I see it behind friend. you right there, and I'm like super jealous right now. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could like maybe. Um, I mean, KitchenAid's great. There's also like other brands though that I yeah. think are. Are really good. I don't know the price differences, but like, and hand mixers. I mean, they all work. It's just the thing that's nice about stand mixers that are as heavy as the KitchenAid is yeah. that you can like walk away from it um, oh. and like let it finish whipping something and not have to worry about it like falling over. Except, yeah. I will say, once I was making like a double batch of something and 
it was like, I think it was my gingerbread dough. Mm -hmm. And it was like really mixing around and it was like shaking yeah. the <laughs> mixer. And I turned around and the mixer was like almost about to fall off the oh counter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so be careful with that. Okay. Sometimes if it's like really hard, if it's like trying yeah. to make something that's really thick, it starts like jumping Stop, around. Yeah. So just be careful. But <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Don't want to end oh up with a mixer on the floor to the floor probably but well, yeah thank you Makes yeah we can't we can't wait for your wedding day too so i know you know by the time your wedding day comes around everything will be good yeah. and we'll be able to like high five and hug each other yes. and like eat each other's yeah. cookies and stuff like that <laughs> and see family again so um yeah. thank you so much for your time and great job on the show course. we really enjoy watching the show yeah. i can't wait to watch the finale tonight so congratulations on all those accomplishments and we wish you the best you. with baking we encourage you to keep doing it and um just keep Thank sharing you. your um recipes and i know our kids our family is such a big fan of yours especially now and um our kids really think it's like oh my gosh it's a celebrity <laughs> so they're still uh -oh. watching it right outside of our door right now actually this whole interview so yeah, yeah. We, thank you so much for all that you do yeah and guys <laughs> no thank you and guys if you are watching this and stuff like that and you want to find out more about bianca's baking stuff or our photography mm -hmm. um you know our instagram handles are on the screen uh right here at yeah. uh, preg obers at bianca bakes uh at bianca dot or period bakes dot bakes whatever mm -hmm. that icon yeah. is it's period <laughs> so um so thank you guys so much bianca thank you again thank and you. Guys, we can't wait to show you guys more of what's going to happen down the road. And we will talk to you soon. And a boom, baby. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bianca.